it's time for another quick tutorial and this time I'm going to show you how to import a technical drawing like this into SketchUp. Now you can't import PDFs, you could export this as an image, but then you will lose all the vector information. And this has been created with another CAD program, which means that it has vector information. If you zoom in, you can actually see that all the lines are vector based. So to do that, we need to convert this into a format that SketchUp can read, and the only format that SketchUp can read that is vector-based is a DVG or DV, uh, uh, DXF. So, uh, we need to convert this. You can use any other program, but I'm going to show you how to do it in Illustrator, because that's the most commonly used. Just open the PDF file directly into Illustrator, and it will retain all the vector information. If I mark, mark everything here, you will see that it has marked the vector lines. And one thing you'll realize is that there is also text here. And the one thing about text is that that will not uh, convert into uh, SketchUp. So if you want the text information, you need to convert that into lines so that SketchUp can actually read it. To do that, just simply go to Type, Create Outlines. That will turn every text into an outlined text. Okay, now our image is ready for export. So we're going to go File, Export, Export As, and on the drop down down here, we're going to create, select DVG. You can also do DVX, but I like to use DVG. Export, and you get this little window, which will give you a few options. Normally, just the default works, so just press OK. OK. Then, we're going to go back into SketchUp, and we're going to go File, Import, and we're going to find our GVG. Double click on that and it will import and give you this import results. That will result in this tiny, 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 tiny little studio drawing. And the reason for that is because this has retained the size of the paper of the PDF. So that's fine. But we need to resize this. Also, one thing you note, you can see that uh, everything turned into black lines. If you want to return, re retain the, the line colors in this, you actually need to just do that in styles. So we're simply going to go into the style pane, uh, or shelf, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to go into edit, press the first cube here, which is the lines, and we're going to go for color. Instead of all same, we're going to go by material. And that is actually how you get colors on your uh, lines. But as I said, when I import this, it retained the size of the PDF that I'm actually imported. So it's probably like an A3 size or something like that. But we want this to be one to one. So we need to scale up this technical drawing to be one to one. And to do that, you just need to rescale this actual DVG. As you can see, the DVG is imported as uh, a group, which is important. If it's not a group, you need to group it. And uh, you could, of course, just try and scale it manually, but there is actually a more precise and easier way to scale drawings. If I double click on this, I'll go inside the group. And that's important because then I'll only scale the actual DVG. If I do it outside the group, I will also scale our little character here. And we don't want that. You'll also need a reference uh, for a scale, like the length of the room or the size of a door. In our case, we're really lucky because we have this scale reference in the actual drawings. Not all drawings has that, so then you might need to do like one measurement and use that. The longer the measurement, the more precise the drawing. So we're going to use the tape measuring tool because the tape measuring tool is not only a guide tool. If you click on one end to the other, you get that like this kind. I'm, I'm going to undo that. You can also use this as a scale tool. If I click on one end and then move it to the other side, I can zoom in here so you can see. If I press uh, Control or Alt, you will see that the little uh, guideline there actually disappears. So once again, Control on a PC, Alt on a Mac. You don't want that guideline. You want it to be like clean like this. So click on one end, over to the other end, click Control once to remove the guide feature, and then click it. Now it has measured from one end to the other, and it says that it's 72 millimeters from there to there. The next thing I do is just type on the keyboard the actual measurements that it's supposed to be. So for my sake, it's supposed to be 4,000 millimeters. If you look down in the corner, you can see that I actually typed it down in coordinates. And I'm going to click, press Enter, and it's going to ask me if I want to resize the active group of components. Just press Enter once more. And now it should be resized to the correct scale. And you can see if I click outside and go outside the group, 
it is now in the correct scale. I can move Sarah in here so you can actually see that this room is now correct. If you're not as lucky as me and you didn't get this as a PDF or an image with vector information, you might have gotten this as an image. And the thing is, you can do the same thing with an image. And let me show you really quickly how to do that. You simply uh, import the image. And then if you can't really read the image very well, you might need to go into preference here, open GL and use maximum texture size. It will probably warn you that it might be a bit more uh, CPU inducing. That's fine. Press OK. And then you can do the same thing here, but you can't do it right on the image. You need to make this into an object first. The easiest way to do that is first explode this, then we'll group it again, make a group. And now it is uh, plain in the group. If I double click now, once again, I'll be inside a group and I can scale this separately from the rest of my model. Go again down to our scale reference here. And this time you can see that I don't have the vector information, but I can still use this to scale on. So again, press control once to remove the, uh, the guide tool, alt if you're on a Mac, click on one end to the other end that you want to put on the correct size, click there. And then the next thing you do is just type in the correct measurements, which in my case is 4,000 millimeters or 400 centimeters. Press enter. And it will once again ask you if you want to resize the active group or component, press yes. And now that will too be in the correct size. So that's two very simple methods of importing drawings. And you can see I can place them on top of each other. You will see that they will be pretty much the same size. And then you can start building on top of that. I hope this was useful for you. I've been talking a lot now, so I'm going to shut up and I will guess I'll talk to you later.